In this screencast, we are going to talk about the integration between Visual Studio, Cosmos DB, and Azure Function. Now, writing and debugging Azure Functions over Cosmos DB change feed is greatly simplified by Visual Studio. But before we jump into Visual Studio and start writing an Azure function, let's understand one concept called change feed of Cosmos DB. So change feed is enabled by default for all the accounts. It is a persistent log of records in the order in which they were modified. You can use your throughput in your write region or any read region to read from the change feed, just like any other Azure Cosmos DB operation. The change feed includes inserts and update operation made to the document. You can capture deletes by setting a soft delete flag within your document in place of deletes. Each change to a document appears exactly once in the change feed. The change feed is sorted by the order of modification within each partition key value. Using change feed and Azure function, you can implement a microservice for your application. You can do a stream processing using Apache Spark. You can implement application level data tiering and archival that is store the hot data in Azure Cosmos DB and the cold data in Azure Data Lake or the storage table. Now let's see how we can write an Azure function using Visual Studio. So come to this Visual Studio blog and download Visual Studio 2017 version 15.5. It is released on December 4th and you can download it from here. Now once you have downloaded the Visual Studio, let's go ahead and start it. So the first thing you should be checking is go to Tools, Extension and Updates and make sure your Azure function and web job tool is of this version 31201.0. If it is any number which is below this number, you should go ahead and update it. But if you are seeing this screencast in future, you may have a number which is bigger than that number and you should be fine with that. So close this and then go ahead and start a project. new project choose Azure function let's call it function app 9 and say OK choose empty and then make sure in the drop down you have v1.net framework and then choose here none and then say OK now go ahead and click add new item and choose this Azure function leave the name as default and click OK and here choose this Cosmos DB trigger and connection name we're gonna call it DB connection database name so I have to go and create a new Cosmos database and a collection on the portal but before that I will just complete this step here that I have a database called IoT and a collection name IoT and then just say OK. But before I can use this application I should go back to the portal and create the collection. So let's do that. Or wait a minute let's see um, this file first okay here so you can see there's a template of this function is created for you database name is IOT collection name is IOT and then there's a connection string settings is called DB connection so let's take this and add it into the settings file here Now let's go ahead and get the DB connection. So let's go back to the portal and create a Cosmos DB database. Create a resource, search for 
Azure Cosmos DB. Here, choose this. Create a new database. And just, I will say, a foot dash a f for azure function to api i'm going to choose sql subscription i'll leave it as default and here is my resource group and once i click create it's going to create the database so it takes few minutes so let's skip that part imagine that i clicked on this create and let's look at the database which I already have created. So here's the database which I already created. I'm coming here to get the connection string. So copy the connection string. Let's go back here and save this connection string here. And in this two properties we have to put our storage connection string. So um, to use Azure function you have to have a storage account also. It's very simple the way we created the Azure uh, Cosmos DB same way you go ahead and create a storage account and I already have a storage account and I'm going to get the keys from there and store it in the application. Now I will just put my storage string here this two properties and that's it all these three properties and then here's my function as you can see it's going for the database IoT collection and here's the connection string it's gonna get from and when uh, we will insert any document in the collection we will capture that change feed here and that document will come inside this collection of documents now let's go ahead and run it okay so it's running looks like everything is good let's come here put a debug line now let's go to the collection and insert a document here create a new document let's give the ID one and add one attribute name Rafat. and now save this document and now we hit this breakpoint and you can see that we got the document here ID one and name Rafat. So now you can see the seamless integration with Visual Studio and Azure Functions and Cosmos DB. So let's continue on. Now let's go ahead and deploy it on the portal. So stop this. Come back here and say publish. This is it. Just one click and your function is published on the portal so go ahead click on publish this name cosmos db function and just say create and as you can see that uh, there are multiple steps will be shown here a zero of three and once these steps are completed we'll go back to the portal and see this function deployed now you can see it's saying preparing profile so it is taking some time meanwhile let's go ahead and look at the function here uh, you may be wondering now you got the input here in the template itself how you will bind this function to a output collection and for that it is very simple you just write like this 
a document db attribute put the as you can see you can just put the database name and collection name and that's about it and you get this collection called document this is your output binding I will put a link which we can talk about more about different kind of bindings and this is here so as you can see now you can do a lot of uh, different kind of binding just using the attributes on the function uh, I'm going to I'm going to put this link in the description of this video so coming back to this function so that's how you can add an output binding or input binding you can add a queue here if you want as an output because if you want to do something here you can go to queue and you can see you can just put the queue name and the property and which is basically just the connection string for the queue and that's how you will get an output binding for a queue and from your this function you can just put any message on the queue and this is one way you can write your microservices once you get the data from the change feed in this Azure function sky is the limit uh, you can do whatever you want from here right now let's see if this function is deployed or not so to check the function let's come back to the portal and you will go ahead and choose your function app and in the function app when you will click on function app you'll see the list of all the functions you have written and here is the function which we have written if we click on this you can see that it is in a running state and here you can stop if you want to so under function you can see this function one this is the function one which you have written in Visual Studio here's the function name function one but you cannot see the code of the function because after this Visual Studio integration if you want to make any change in the function you should be using Visual Studio so no more you can see the code here as you can see before when you were writing the Azure functions in the portal directly now after the seamless integration with Visual Studio this is much better experience to write functions here same thing with the integrate as I said you can do the integration with the input and output of the collection in the code itself now here under manage you can see two keys are there master key and a default key you will use these keys if you want to do a authentication and if your function is a webhook or a HTTP trigger function so at that time you would use these keys for monitor monitor will give you some uh, metrics on your functions but it is recommended to use application insight if you want to see a rich data about your function proxy is another very interesting thing you can create proxies for your function again I will put the link in the description of this video where we talk about proxies so you can see uh, using proxies you can have a different URL can come in and it can be routed to some different URL this is the backend URI so that's where you will use the proxies and here's another interesting example of proxy you come on a certain URL and then you go to another backend URL and then you will use a different app key so this is another a nice feature to route your calls to different APIs with different keys and which is not shared with the end user or with the application which you are using on mobile phone or on any other client devices and then in last and using slots you can have two three different slots for your preview or for your production and uh, you can deploy your functions into preview slot or in production as you can see 
it's a preview feature and you cannot enable it here you have to set it up in the function settings and for that I will again put another URL in the description that how you can enable different kind of slots so I hope this screencast will get you started writing Azure functions with Cosmos DB see you next time